Okay, so when did we last see a breaker phone? I think we've had two in here on video. This is from an end user, as you know, we don't normally do end users, but uh, uh, still helping a few during this COVID thing. One of the difficulties it's come with its thumb screw things, which we're going to lose. I wish accessories didn't come with radios. So we've only got what for the video. We've only got one spring clip there. So what's happened is the PTT switch has fallen apart, and so the first thing is we need to put it back together. Secondly, I can spot the fuse holder has only got half of it there. I am obliged to send them out with the fuse holder. So whether he's got the other half or not, that has to happen. So I understand the bits of the switch are in here. Now Mr Chippy is really good at putting switches back together. But we'll see whether the trouble is if we ask Mr Chippy to do it it will delay the radio because he's got other things he's working on. Yeah, it looks like he's managed to rescue the contacts. So, we've got the service manual in front of us. You know, I had this service manual. Look at this ink splodge. We had a... Instead of having a genuine cartridge for the HP printers, I was daft enough to have a WH Smith own brand cartridge. And it's not like they were any cheaper, because they were, like a lot of things at WH Smith, they were full whack price and jolly well spilt on the original service manual which of course subsequently when I scanned it we've got that blank black splodge many years ago or some years ago I started putting service manuals for free use on the sharing website Scribed and then last year I went in to look at one of my own manuals which I'd misplaced I thought oh I'll go into Scribed and I'll go and print off one of my own manuals and do you know what it wouldn't let me print off my own manual without paying even though they were there, supposed to be there for free use so I logged in oh no I, I emailed them and said um, why is this and I got some semi-automated reply saying that the rules have changed and la -de -da, -de -da, -de da I got 200 and something manuals on or more for free use and it was generating them about 5,000 views a month. So with that, I just uh, deleted the whole lot. And then now later, they said, oh, but um, we, you're, you're a special case. And uh, if you put your stuff back on, you know, we can, we can give you free membership for two days. Now, if they've got that kind of power over what I'm doing, goodbye scribed. So, if you ever, whilst they were on Scribe for years, if you uh, got a download with a black splodge, you know where it's come from. So what I need to do is unsolder what's left of the switch, because it can only be put together if we actually unsolder it. Uh, the other thing I'll do while it's in bits is these are always dirty, the, the controls. Now what's stopping this? As it happens, it's not too difficult to get to. So I'm just going to start doing that. Okay, back to record. That's sucked the solder off, so hopefully we can now remove the bottom bit of the switch. Notice it's got the contacts are stepped. Let's see if we can see that a bit closer. 
so you've got one set of contacts will move before the other so of course it's vital we try and get that the right way around well he really has rescued the two contacts so that's fantastic so if we go back to how this was because it's got stepped contacts we need to make sure we're doing this the right way round so it goes in that way on it's just as long as we know which way on it goes What doesn't help is the glued-on extender onto the PTT bar. So what we need to do is to make sure that these lugs are as open as they're going to be. That one's damaged, so we need to close that up. I still think that needs closing up more. So we'll tip that one back out. So we'll try and tip that one back out. So that's those back in. like working on the church organs that I work on this apart from the electrical side because <laughs> they're mechanical So we should have continuity between those two, which we haven't, continuity between those two, which we have. So no continuity, continuity. It's no good, it'll have to come apart again. Now we're going to be in danger of the lug snapping up, aren't we? write to Binatone and say do you remember that radio you did 30 years ago 38 years ago you got any spare switches and they tell me where to go we've got someone measuring up windows at 10 o'clock so I can't see the clock from here so that doorbell is going to do its noise over the tannoy system right I'll hold on to the bottom bit let's remove the top bit it 
you know what I've gone and done, don't you? I didn't clean the contacts while it was in bits. So with the fiberglass brush, Make sure that's crimped a bit more. Just make sure once again I'm putting it together the right way around. Yeah. Of course, it's only Paxil in this uh, insulation, so again, that's something easy to break. Right, let's have another look. This is where all your time goes on these kind of jobs. Nothing. It's going for the transmit one. That's all right. It's about this side. No, it's just not reliable. It's not reliable. I just think the contacts have had so much use and abuse over the years. Um, what I might do, I might find a standard mic which has got the same... might find a standard mic with the same type of arrangement. What we tend to end up with is buckets of those awful cheap power mics, you know, the ones that are £6.99, whereas standard mics are fourteen fifty. you know. And um, you know, I just think the contacts are too mashed up. It's just not going to be reliable. So, yes, yeah, all right putting it back together. Let's pause the video and see if I can find something. 
I thought to myself, I'm sure we've got some mics, some hand mics. These CA... Oh, that's on a bit to have a big zoom. We'll just get rid of that a bit. We've got these uh, accessory mics, which came with some business radios in the 90s. Uh, they've got DTMF keypads, and we have no interest in that kind of thing. And so we've just kind of used them for for spares, to be honest, because they've got a 3.579 colour burst crystal in there, and the chips are in sockets. And um, I thought, well, it's the same kind of switch, isn't it? So I take it apart, and the bent-looking contact comes out, and we've got exactly the same scenario. That just like the, it is exactly the same switch, absolutely, and it's fallen apart in just the same way. So we'll just snip that board out of there and put that in the box of the tat. I'll probably rip that off easily. Do you know what? I can't. Right, we'll put that in the junk box and the rest of this can go in the bin. I'll see if we can find another one. So the next mic I found is one of the... Oh, it's a grandstand mic. I can't take that apart. Oh, no, 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 no. No, we keep that. <laughs> Abandon that take. That's more like it. That's the kind of junk that can go in the bin if we can recover a switch out of it. It's got a a knackered lead. We can snip the plug off of that. A leaked battery. And you know what we're going to find? It's a totally different type of... It's all going in the bin anyway, whichever way we look at it. You know what I think to echo, Mike? How does this sit in the moulding? Those screws could be useful. They're smaller than usual. A bit like the ones you get holding slide switches on front panels. different type of switch and it feels dodgy anyway so that's another uh, piece of junk that is no good to us right we'll try another this video is going to be trying to find a mic with a bit of works we can take out okay different mics lurking different sheds and I was clearing one of the organ uh, sheds yesterday and I came across two sorry looking mics so I think we don't use coffin mics and the brands aren't on these. We do use those and that might be reusable. This lost its PTT bar. So we'll open this one up and see whether it's got the same kind of switch. Not quite sure how it got itself into one of the organ storage sheds. As I keep saying, we're having some building work here starting June or July, and there'll be a pipe organ going in there, which we have in store. And then in part of this shed is where this pipe organ is currently in store. So what I'm trying to do is just clear away too much stuff that's in there so we can actually get to the pipe organ parts. Okay, this looks promising. Yes, it's the one with the with the contacts that are. Uh, but it's a different type of different type of lever, isn't it? On this one. Ah. I know what we're going to end up doing. We're going to have to take that one apart again and then use this lever on this switch. I'll recover the mic insert on this as well. 
And there's the door. Okay, so fast forward a couple of hours and uh, I've had my second COVID jab and they said it's stronger this time, so just warning me. Well, it's not quite the same style, but I'm sure we can take the works out of one and put it in the other. So basically I want that bit. So we'll take that out. And that bit out. And they are the same. We'll put that plunger in. With it <laughs> spring in the right place I was going to say. The answer is it does work. It's still a bit reluctant to return. Right, we'll get these old wires off. You know what, I think that metal one's coming off its, um, its axis. It is turning out to be a pain job. I think we're earning about two quid an hour on this job. I think that one's tightening up. The only one which doesn't look like it needs tightening up is this one. We'll just drop the screws off a bit. 
yeah that's all right Yes, that's loose as well. So, which one wasn't? Oh, it's Mike Gain. Yeah, you'd never touch that, would you, unless you were using the public address facility. So, while we've got this in bits, it's sensible to get the switch clean actually properly inside. been doing this an hour yet nothing else wrong with this when we've spent all this time okay so I think we're now ready to unsolder these wires When I was at Nottingham Radio, Mr. Smith used to say to me, "You're spending ten. He says you you're spending ten pounds to save ten pence, and he said you're saving the customer ten pounds. Sorry, you're saving the customer ten pence, but you're spending ten pounds in time. And I'm no better. I'm I'm still doing the same. I wonder if my local garage if I need some mechanic work ever. I wonder if they'll piece something together for me to save me spending 14 quid on a new part. I'm going to put this together so we get the placement right. No, oh, I can't do that, can we? Because you've got to. No. Well, we'll just have to solder it where we think it is. Right, let's get started. So we're going to leave it at that for now and deal with the microphone because it's all disintegrated. So we'll get the basic unit connected up. Which one is extension speaker? I don't know, we want the radio on high power.
So will it be red, will it be blue? <laughs> Let's go for blue. You have a very good industrial quality connector on these. So we're not in the right one. Well, it does all the right things. I, I love the way it does. Go says PA when it goes into PA. Uh, right. Oh, on and off. That was the on and off switch, yeah. And it goes to channel one every time, does it? I've forgotten that hateful part of it. Okay, so we'll go for picture in picture. Right, we want a second hand piece of paper. What have we got? a new piece of paper that goes against the grain I may live in Lincolnshire but I'm a Yorkshireman really okay here we go transmit 3.2 watts deviation Wallo. 1.8 kilohertz. Receive. Sign and meter on. There's 12. Let's go into the attenuator control so we can see this together. Put the big hand at 1 and the small one at just under 5. So it's 0.495 microvolts. It's, I think it's, if we look at the service point, I think it's supposed to be better than 0.5. Three, supposed to do 3.8 watts. It's 0 0.5 for 10 dB. Yeah, it's doing that easily. So it's already doing, as far as the receive goes, even if I don't think it's brilliant, it's already doing what the manufacturer says it will do. Right, we'll put that delicate bit to one side and we'll take the lid off. So we've got most of it in this side and I don't, even, I don't even remember if there's any adjustments on the transmit amplifier side. Must be three years since I saw one. These were expensive, they were 109.99 at the time. And they're unique, it's not like you know, the usual max on the usual unit and the usual cybernet. This is different. And look, it's still got the plastic, which I won't peel off. It's still got the manufacturer's plastic on there to protect it. And look at that. I've, t I've gone and taken the amplifier side off like a wally. Isn't that, I mean, that is fantastic. It's just all enclosed in its own screened thing. You're just not going to get any interference coming out of that. GD, CDK, is that the manufacturer then? Anyway, we better tune it up the other side first. 
I could have sworn on a stack of Bibles that it was the switch side. Which was the one you didn't take off. Made in Japan. So you have, if, they, if we can see this, your LC713 watt, the synthesizer, LC7136, then you have an LC7181 scan generator, and then in here you have the LC7191, is it, which is a data receiver. So what happens is you have, if I remember rightly, you've got serial data going up and down the, the cable. Whereas on the realistic, you've got um, you've actually got all the individual channel selector wires. So this is technologically, it's got scan inside, although it's not used. Technologically, it's uh, it's one of the best. Okay, so is it on frequency? Look at that. So it's dropped twenty seven seven nine oh eight six. And there's our trimmer C T one. Now that's as high as it will go, 79085. It is in spec at that, and but otherwise we have to start changing the crystal. It is in spec. Um, just have to look at the service manual. supposed to be plus, plus or minus 300 hertz well it's within 80 you know so it's, it's well within you can also adjust capacitor 44 by actually physically changing the capacitor um, which is the little one down there but it's within the limit. The limit spec is 3.6 watts. We need to try and improve that. Um, so we'll start with T4, 5, 6, 7 and L2. That'll be on the other side, won't it? So T4 is there and T5 is there. So that's our first two. So let's uh, go back into that picture dropping as the sets heats up we're now down at 3.94 watts 2.9 to 3 watts so on T5 uh, that's T4, T5 T6 and T7 so where are they Four, five, they're on the back.
yeah, there's T6. T7's there. Needs a bit of heat. Well, that's as good as we're going to get, and that's now it's warm, it's three watts. It is. VR1 by the looks of the ink splodge. And VR1 is the one just here. Now I'm going to have to just do the whistle thing on this because it's uh, because of the way it is. Wallow. <whistles> Wallow. Wallow, one, two, wallow. That's it, that's where we are. We'll just check low power is low power. Um, 0 0.32. So that's our transmit done. Now I'm going to reset the receive my signal generator to what frequency this is actually on. So 2779085. Otherwise I'll be retuning the radio to a wrong frequency. So we're going to start with the detector. So we'll put this little scope on. Turn the bench light off. Put an S9 signal equivalent on. Have the volume appropriate. And we'll adjust the detector or discriminator core, whatever you want to call it, which looks to be this one on here without me looking it up, yeah that was pretty spot on, put the bench light back on, turn the volume down a bit, and I'll receive it is just Transformer 1 and Transformer 2. Quite simply those two. Well, that's brought it up a bit. So it's already doing what it's supposed to do. Excellent.
Excellent. So we'll get a new reading for the Synod. And the new reading. So there's your Synod meter at 12. And here's the attenuator. So we've got a big hand at 1. And a little one now at 4. So it's now... 0.4 microvolts for 12 dB cyanide. The manufacturer quotes 10 dB, and we've got for 10, we've got 0.35, and they also quote 20 dB cyanide. And they say better than one microvolt. And we've got 0 0.9 microvolts for 20 dB cyanide. So altogether the receiver exceeds what they say. And let's see what we can hear down to. Squelch has come in. About 0 0.1 microvolt to be honest. It's it's very good. Now let's get, we can't adjust the squelch. Um, but we can just check verify so full squelch. It, I remember these a bit wishy washy. Yeah, it's one microvolt maximum. Yeah, that's that's as weak as dishwater. And let's set the minimum, turn the signal generator off. Back in, it parts at 0 0.3 microvolts, straight in. And right down to, well, 0 0.05 microvolts. So we don't have any adjustments. Let's go back to that transmit. Yeah, about 3.2 watts. So I'll put that lid on. Right, we'll pause the video and it's time for a cup of tea. Okay, we'll just wrap this up now. Oh, really, literally, here's some packaging material. I'll just turn this off just in case I knock something on this rather delicate bit. So we've got the electret condenser mic there. We've got the filter remains, which I think came out of there and I should have put back before the... before I got to this stage. Make sure that's fully unfilled, shall we say. This probably came out of one of those other mics, to be honest. Yeah, it didn't come out of this, did it? Because it didn't have a filter before, so that's better. It just had that foam rubber. see that that's the right way round or can I <coughs> it is
Good. Might just be able to put a little piece in the top there just to pack between the back side of the microphone. There we go. When one of you gets your radio back in a piece of packaging with a chunk cut out, you know uh, what it went to. This was always another another snag with these, and that's the wires rubbing against the mic gain control. We've got to make sure that we've got wires clear of the two pillars, which we have. Here the receive. Quick check with transmit. Oh, just over three watts, about three point two. <clears throat> wallow, testing one, two, wallow, one, two. I'm just listening on our monitor receiver. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Right, we'll turn the test equipment off and we'll put it on the aerial. I dread to think how long this video is. Hope it's not over an hour. But so much time went into uh, that. How many recover parts did we try? <laughs> One nana, Roger. That'd have been a laugh and a half if it had come back to me with a Roger. Do you know what? This has still got the protective plastic on it as well. So if the customer takes that off, he'll have a pristine panel under there. Still got the plastic on it. That is coming unglued. I think we'll do something about that. Um, So there we have it, the Binaton Breaker phone 01 stroke 8562 from 1981. Thanks for putting up with this long repair. <laughs>